You shouldn't be acting that way. You got to be on your P's and Q's. And just having the right moral compass will stop you from like being so specific and pointing the finger at somebody you don't even know you've never had a conversation with this this professor and that's just not fair what's going on everybody it's your girl b octavia and i am back with another video this is a psa please bundle up when you go outside the change in weather constantly one day is nice one day is not the next day is raining and then the next day is sunshines and blue skies make sure that you bundle up because literally i got a cold and it has been one of the worst ones that i've had in quite a while Today we will be talking about a Idaho professor that sued a TikToker. I remember in a previous video that I recently dropped, I spoke along the lines of saying that people on social media that want to play detective and they want to cover certain cases, they have to not think about what covering the story will do for their channels for their tiktok platform or for their youtube or for their twitter it's a lot of people that's going around this thinking that they have all the answers to take off's murder people thinking that they got all the answers when it comes to the idaho college students murders it's a lot of people that's doing that and i see right through it especially if you are pointing the finger at specific people you know what i'm saying you're not keeping it general at all you're not doing real investigative work it's very slanderous and it will get you in trouble so, without further ado, let's get into this video. I'm going to tell y'all all about it, and then I'm going to share my thoughts towards the end of the video. A professor from the University of Idaho filed a defamation lawsuit against a, a TikToker who is a self-proclaimed psychic self-proclaimed meaning that they believe in their powers and that's pretty much all they need so this tiktoker did a tarot card reading basically insinuating and accusing this specific idaho professor of killing all four students all the while performing this tarot card reading she supposedly sees all of this she sees this female professor as the killer. Rebecca Schofield, who is the university's history department chair, alleges in the federal lawsuit she filed that TikTok user Ashley Gouillard consistently spread baseless claims that falsely linked the professor to the November 13th slangs. These two women have never met, but in the lawsuit, lawsuit Ms. Schofield stated, Ashley Gouillard decided to use the communities and TikTok's platform for her own self-promotion. For her own self-promotion. This TikToker here, Ashley Gouillard, has uploaded similar content, taking credit for solving other high-profile crimes as well, including Atlanta rapper Takeoff, which is still an open case. Specifically on the college students' murders, this TikToker, this TikToker stated that she knew Professor Schofield was involved in these murders because, because the professor was romantically in, involved with one of the victims. And instead of Miss Schofield being the person behind the knife, this TikToker alleges that Miss Schofield set all four students up, up to be killed in hopes of hiding this alleged relationship, said the TikToker. 
after the TikToker received backlash for accusing this Idaho professor, she doubled down responding in a video. She doubled down on her belief that the professor was responsible saying, I don't care what y'all say, Rebecca was the one to initiate the plan. In the process of the investigation, the professor, Ms. Schofield, was asked where was she at the time of these students' murders. Basically, what was her alibi? She told police, as well as being stated in the lawsuit, that she was with her husband on November 13th in Portland, Oregon, visiting friends at the time. And it is unclear whether or not this TikToker got the police's attention and made them ask the professor's whereabouts or I believe that was just a part of the procedure, but still, that couldn't make it any better. You know what I'm saying? Especially because police does look at social media in some type of ways to see what is being talked about pertaining to the case and if it can help the investigation. It is also important to note that none of the victims took a class taught by Professor Schofield. Professor Schofield also expressed in the lawsuit that she has been harmed emotionally by the false TikToks done by Ashley Gouillard. The false TikToks, the false statements, and the false accusations. Shortly after the murders is when all of this slanderous content began, targeted specifically towards the professor, Professor Schofield, and nobody else. On the 29th of November, a cease and desist was sent to Ashley Gouillard. Despite that letter, she continued making content aimed towards the professor. On December 8th, a second cease and desist was sent, asking the TikToker to take down all of the content aimed towards the professor. And instead of taking down the post, the TikToker made yet another TikTok showing the cease and desist letter. She stated, that if the professor wants the content removed, she would need to file actual legal documents in a federal court asking to remove it. Basically inviting a lawsuit right to her front door. Now, to me, that's an indication of not being well or trying to call somebody's bluff. And you should never call a professor's bluff. They're very smart people. And I definitely will be seeing what happens with this lawsuit because I hope it goes the distance. This is the thing about this one specifically, though. There are a few things about this TikToker's responses that shows me that this, this lady is not well, you know, in the mind per se. There could be a lot of things going on, including this person wanting attention. A attention seeker that is not a child, that could be, you know, something that a loony bin can help or a psychologist or a therapist or something and that does not mean that this person should not be made a example of and this is an example of what not to do as a content creator because let's not say we're trying to play detective or this that and the, and the fourth because if it was up to this young lady the professor would be in jail right now and they would throw away the key. The real killer, aka this sick guy right here, he would still be walking free out in the Poconos with his father. This lawsuit could bring attention to the fact that she needs to be somewhere that that is monitored. They could mandate she get mental help. And that would be in hopes of her not continuing the same behavior. I hope that this lawsuit 
will shut down her TikTok platform because anybody that goes this route and you get not one cease and desist, but you get two and you are mocking the cease and desist and just doing all this clown stuff. This is TikTok is a, a platform that should be taken serious. You know, this is a billion dollar billion dollar company that, you know, you shouldn't be acting that way. You got to be on your P's and Q's. If I can't curse and say certain words on here, you can't do stuff like that. Having the right moral compass will stop you from like being so specific and pointing the finger at somebody you don't even know. You've never had a conversation with this, this professor and that's just not fair. The microscope or the binoculars were on that college anyway. I'm sure that whole college got locked down. You feel what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure of it. So you can't be pointing a finger at people. Who's to say that the police won't think of her as a suspect off the rip just from seeing certain things on social media? And who's to say that your content won't inspire somebody to accuse her too or inspire people to go about investigating in the way that you are or being a psychic i don't even know if you can go to school for that you feel what i'm saying i thought that was just a gift but are all psychics self-proclaimed like i'm confused do they have you no know, psychology psychic so you can do some type of school and listen but i'm pretty sure she doesn't have it she doesn't have the qualifications so she's gonna for lack of a better word she's going to or lack of a better term she is going to get what she's itching for she's going to get nailed to the cross but she ain't jesus um and this ain't sunday you feel what I'm saying? So, yeah, um, don't do this, ladies and gentlemen. And if you are younger than me, I'm 26. If you are younger than me, you are younger than this Ashley person, this self-proclaimed psychic, then learn from this and don't, don't even, you can move in a way where you ain't even got to get no cease and desist. You feel what I'm saying? Like, you move a certain way, you ain't even got to get no damn, de damn cease and desist. You ain't got to do that. Why you had to do that, though? And, and things like this have to happen. You know, c content creator to content creator or person to person, mano, imano, yeah. Real, recognize real. Listen, if I was talking really, really reckless and I said some slanderous stuff, I couldn't even be mad about a cease and desist. I'm not going to ignore the cease and desist, though. That's what I'm not going to do. I don't like court. I don't like court. You feel me? I like the way that court is over the phone. You ain't got to leave out your house and go to court. I mean, maybe they, they changing that. They, they making sure that you come. All right, I'm rambling. But... Yeah, yeah, this has to happen, and I definitely will be keeping up with this, and let's see how it plays out. It's your girl, B. Octavia, and I will see y'all in my next video, which follow me on Instagram, follow me on all other platforms. That will be in the description below, and I will see y'all then. Yeah.